Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 30 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to talk about the Railgun, this ridiculously powerful um, weapon of defense that just, it's, it's really good, okay? But it's also very expensive. So, um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to craft when working with the Railgun, so let's get uh, right into it. Um, the railgun is crafted really, really simply. It's crafted using the turret base, which we looked at last episode, the turret aiming unit, which we also looked at last episode, and then this thing, the railgun accelerator. Okay, the prime, that's the primary uh, crafting component for the railgun, um, for which you need these things. Linear induction motors and power modules. So you're going to need one power module, which is crafted like this, an eye of ender, not an ender pearl, two redstone, three gold, or th and three steel ingots. Now, like with the other circuits, you can replace the gold with electrum and the eye of ender with copper if you have, obviously, if you have access to electrum, if you're, you know, if you have thermal expansion, uh, to get one power module, right? So that, so you don't need the eye of ender if you have these other things, but uh, you'll get one, okay? But all you need is one to, to craft one railgun. Okay, once you have that, you can craft yourself, uh, you're going to need to craft yourself some linear induction motors, which are each crafted like this. Two gold coils, a, some redstone dust, and three steel ingots. Now, you're going to need eight of these things. Sixteen gold coils, that's a lot. Um, because remember, each of these gold coils requires eight gold or eight electrums. So you need sixteen of these, that's a lot of gold. Okay? But once you've got those, you can come over here and craft the Railgun Accelerator, which is the power module surrounded by eight linear induction motors. And that gets you the accelerator, which you can put in here to craft the Railgun. All right? And now uh, the Railgun, just like the uh, anti-air gun, gets its power from underneath. And it looks like this. It's pretty sick looking. That's pretty cool. I, I like it. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome thing. All right? So that's the Railgun. Um, Right now, it obviously says I have no ammunition, and it would also tell me there's no power because we're not giving it power right now. Um, so before we talk about powering this thing, let's talk about the ammo. Now, unlike the air, the anti-air gun, which just fired scrap, the railgun ammunition is very specific. You have to craft it, uh, and it's not uh, all that cheap. So to get started with the railgun, you need to craft some one kilogram railgun ammo, which is crafted quite simply with three HSLA steel ingots, and that gives you three of the one kilogram railgun ammunition. Um, then what you do, and these can stack to 16, then what you do is you upgrade this by adding more weight to it. And you have to go all the way through adding everything in succession to get up to the next uh, level. Uh, and the ho the heaviest ammo you can get is 32,768 kilograms, all right, which is crafted by putting the 16,384 kilogram ammo, which is the one just below it, and surrounding it in bedrock alloy ingots. Keep in mind that that gives you one of these railgun ammo. So yeah, the higher weight railgun ammo, real expensive. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm not gonna. I didn't obviously put it down a, a crafting bench for all of these, but we're gonna go through this and we're gonna show you how to craft it. So to get to this point, the heaviest ammo, you have to craft the 16,384, which is crafted by taking the 8,192 and putting four bedrock alloy ingots around it. And to get the 8,192, you have to craft a 4,096 and put two al bedrock alloy ingots around it. And you're going to see that this pattern continues. To get the 4096, you have to craft the 2048 and surround it by eight gold. To get the 2048, you take the 1024, surround it with four gold. To get the 1024, you craft the 512 and place two gold ingots. To get the 512, you take the 256 and surround it in 8 iron ingots. To get the 256, you take the 128 and put 4 iron. To get the 128, you take the 64 and put 2 iron. To get the 64, you take the 32 and put 8 stone, not cobblestone. To get the 32, you take the 16 and put 4 stone. To get the 16, you take the 8 and put 2 stone. To get the 8, you take the 4 and put 8 wood. To get the 4, you take the 2 and put 4 wood. And to get the two, you take the one, and you put two wood. So you see that pattern. You start with wood, putting two, then four, then eight, then you go through to the stone, then the iron, then the gold, and then the bedrock. So yeah, getting this ammo, very expensive. Alright, but it'll do a lot of damage. 
you might see there's a hole over there uh, from my testing earlier. Okay, so now that we have some ammo, let's just take the one kilogram ammo and stick it in. This is the this is the easiest to craft, lightest ammo for the railgun. Probably wouldn't want to fire this, just because it's it's actually not very expensive at all to upgrade this to the stone uh, level. Um, so I don't know. I I I don't know if I would fire the one kilogram ammo just because it's not very expensive to upgrade it a couple times. Okay, but anyway, maybe you will. Have, um, so let's just talk about the power now. Power requirement for the railgun is four megawatts. Okay, that's eight hydrokinetic engines. That's two uh, uh, micro turbines. All right. So it's quite a lot of. It's quite a big power requirement. If we look at the handbook, it'll tell you, and and. This, if you know about railguns, this works how you'd expect. It, it, it fires the heavy ammunition, and it deals more damage the heavier projectiles you fire, and it does do collateral damage to terrain. The railgun automatically targets the nearest visible mob, okay? And it won't target those sheep over there. See, there's some sheep. It won't target the sheep because they're not hostile, but it will target the nearest hostile mob, and it, it will shoot at it. Now, it'd be cool if you could target this thing manually, but you can't. It's 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 a defensive weapon. Um, it, it'll just auto-target the mobs. Okay? And like the anti-air gun, you can put this upside down if there's a block above it, um, and you can feed the power in from above, and that way the railgun can target stuff below it. So if you're in the nether, for instance, and you want it to fire down because you're up near the top, I guess, you could do that. Whatever. Okay. So the required power, yeah, it's 4 megawatts. And then you see this equation for required torque, okay? Now, you're going you're gonna to need to solve this equation depending on the, um, the type of ammo you're feeding into this thing. Because it, the torque requirement is based on the weight of the ammo you put in. It's 512 times the square root of the mass of the projectile. <clears throat> so, to fire the 1 kilogram ammo, Quite simply, it's you need 512 torque. Okay, to fire the two kilogram ammo, you need 1024, and it goes up like that, all the way to the heaviest ammo, which I've calculated requires a torque value of 92,681 or 82. I'm not sure if that is rounded up or not, um, but that yeah, that's quite a lot of torque to get that heaviest ammo. So whatever ammo you're trying to fire, you need to solve this equation. It's a really simple equation. Just do it on a scientific calculator so that you know how much torque to put in here. So I would highly suggest that you attach your railgun to your power by using some C uh, CVT units. That way you can very easily change the ratio if you want to put some heavier ammo in it. Otherwise, that way you don't have to break the railgun or break stuff near it and add more gearboxes. So I would highly recommend using CVT units when working with the railgun. Okay? Now, let's give it some power. I've already got set in here the amount of power that I gave it. Um, actually, let's set that down to 2 and, and 1 and see. 9, 2, 6, 8, 1. And uh, turn it on. Four, two, six, three. Is that good? Yep. Okay. Um, and these numbers, you're probably not going to actually hit this number right on the head because you're working with mostly even gear ratios. But with the CBT unit, you don't have to. But just for this demonstration, keep in mind that I am currently set up to fire the heaviest ammunition. But we're going to start by firing. Uh, the light ammunition, the one kilogram ammunition. We're going to see how much damage that does. So let me take a spider, and we're going to spawn a spider over here. And notice that the railgun is slowly tracking over. Oh, and there he goes. It's firing. As you can see, the one kilogram ammo is only dealing one damage per shot. Okay, that's pretty crap. That is a massive effect. <laughs> All right, so you see that I had a full stack of 16 of those in there. It wasn't actually enough to kill the spider. Spider survived. All right, so that's why I'm saying you probably do not want to fire the one kilogram ammunition because it's very easy to upgrade to at least the um, was it the 16? No, it was even heavier. Um, Railgun. Let's grab the. Uh, 64, I think that would mean then. 
and the 64 kilogram ammo, yeah, is the last of the stone ones. So you're, you really don't have much of an excuse not to upgrade your ammo to at least this rank because all you're using is wood and stone. Um, although you may, depending on how much terrain damage it deals, you might not want to. Let's place a spider. Oh, that is some significant terrain damage. Okay, so you'll notice that killed the spider in a couple of hits. Uh, I think three hits. But it did do significant terrain damage, so you may want to, to tone down your ammo to a point where it doesn't deal terrain damage. So let's see here what we got. So that was 64. So let's grab some 32. Get rid of these. And we'll grab some 16. And we'll grab some 8. And we'll see what happens. I'm going to place the spider... Uh, uh, um, let me grab a really, let me grab a really blast resistant block and we'll see if that will, uh, actually no, we, we want to see if it deals terrain damage. So let's just go ahead and put, uh, we'll take the 64 out, goodness, and we'll put in the 32 and we'll see what happens with the 32. We'll spawn the spider over here because the, the, the railgun will reach. See, it's turning back right already. This is 32. Oh, goodness. So it died in two shots, still dealing quite a bit of terrain damage. I think because this is sand and it breaks so much easier, it's dealing more terrain damage to the sand. Okay, so now the, the, the 32 killed the spider in two shots. Um, so now let's put in the 16. And I guess we'll, we'll continue to spawn our spider over here. Alright, it's turning around. And it needed four shots, but that time you'll notice that it, it's actually it, it is breaking the terrain. It doesn't seem to break the terrain every time, but uh, it is dealing uh, you know significant damage to terrain. So be careful when you're uh, when you deploy the railgun in an area where you actually care what happens to the terrain. Oh, and, and it missed that shot. All right, so stuff's going on. The, the sand is, I mean, the, the shots are, are getting rid of the grass. Four. Okay, so that, that'll take four shots to kill. So, yeah, the railgun is 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 it's pretty pretty tough business, right? Now let's put the 32 kilogram, I mean, the uh, 32,768 um, kilogram ammo in there. And we're going to come over here to an area that I don't care about. Actually, let's let's see what the range is on this. Let's see if it'll uh, it'll if it'll fire all the way over here at our obsidian uh, platform that we had. It probably won't. It's, oh, it will. Okay, so the railgun has a very long range, um, and it destroyed the obsidian. So yeah. Um, ooh, wow. Devastating. Let's keep going. Is it gonna fire one? Did the gun unload? It did. I think the gun unloaded. So it actually appears, depending on what your render settings are set to, that the railgun's range can actually out the railgun can actually outrange the distance at which the gun itself is loaded in if you don't have a an anchor there. Oh! Ooh, ew, it blew itself up. <laughs> oh, that's not good. How did it blow itself up? Don't like that. All right, so apparently the railgun pitched down a bit too far, and it actually blew up its platform. But we've we've done some a lot of demonstrations now. You can see the destructive potential that the railgun has. So you're definitely going to want to be very careful uh, about how you go about using the railgun, um, because yeah, you can end up inadvertently dealing significant damage to your area, and uh, it's it's. It, 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 it does quite a lot of damage if you're using extremely high weight um, uh, ammo. Um, it's hard to imagine a scenario other than fighting a boss like the Wither or the Ender Dragon or something from another mob mod that has an absolute crap ton of health where you would actually where it would actually be cost effective to create the um, 32,000 kilogram ammo. I'm you know because this 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 will probably this deals a lot of damage. So you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Be careful with the railgun is what I'm saying. Because it will just decimate everything. Um, 
so yeah, I'm. That's pretty much it. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I hope you've learned all you need to know about the railgun. Uh, it's not that difficult to craft. It's just very expensive, and it's not difficult to use. Just give it enough power, put some ammunition in there, and it'll fire away and destroy mobs. But keep in mind, it's going to deal significant damage to the terrain, uh, depending on the weight of the ammo you're, you're using. So. Uh, yeah, that's it. So what are we talking about next episode? Well, we've talked about the railgun now, so next episode we're on our second page, and we are going to talk about the freeze gun next. Um, let's see, tomorrow is uh, Independence Day, July 4th, so I may or may not have a video out for you tomorrow. Um, I'm going to see, but uh, I, I will have family over that day, and it is a, bu a busy day, so I may have one out for you on the 4th, I may have it out on the 5th. So next episode, we're going to talk about the freeze gun, which is actually a non-lethal uh, defense option, now that we've talked about the most lethal defense option, or one of the most lethal defense options. So yeah, that was the railgun. So I hope you've enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'm Satin H, and I'm signing out.